Hi everyone, it's Alia or Cake Legend and today's video is a cake decorating tutorial for this super fun circus Madagascar themed cake. I made this for my cousin's third birthday. He loves Madagascar. I love this movie too, so it was so fun. And I know it looks kind of crazy, but it's not very complicated to make. I used a six inch cake for the bottom tier and a four inch for the top. Each tier was about three to four inches tall, so it's not a humongous cake overall. And we start with the same process as any cake. First we stack and chill our cake layers with the filling and then we mask them in buttercream. I masked the top tier in some white vanilla buttercream and the bottom tier was blue, just smooth iced. And like I say in all of my tutorials, if you want to learn how to mask a cake without doing a crumb coat, I have a separate tutorial for that. So after both cakes were masked and chilled, I put supports in the bottom tier using these bubble tea straws and then I placed the 4 inch cake on top of that. I also have a tutorial on how to stack a multi-tier cake like this and I show you two different methods. Be sure to check that out in the top corner here. But of course it's just some bubble tea straws in the cake with a little board on top and then you just place the four inch cake on top of that and one last dowel through the entire thing just to hold it all together. So now it's time to make all the decoration. I started with making the fondant letters that spell out his name and I didn't have any cutters so I just freehanded all the letters with an X-Acto blade. And I also made sure that the fondant was a little thicker than normal because I wanted to put toothpicks into them so that they would be standing on the bottom tier instead of like thin letters resting against the side of the cake. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. Here are the letters all cut out with the toothpicks in them and here's some little yellow fondant stars. And I didn't film that but pretty simple, you just roll out some fondant pretty thin and you cut them out with a punch. Next, I painted those letters with some edible gold paint, you can use whatever gold you'd like. And I did two or three coats just to get it really nice and shiny. The fondant number three on the side there was made with a fondant mold. I also forgot to film that because I did it at work when I stacked the cake the day before. Now we're going to take some red fondant and roll it out pretty thin and you want it to be as tall as your top tier. So I made sure mine was at least four inches tall. And then I made these little marks that were each a centimeter apart so I could start cutting out all those little red stripes. Super simple. All you need is a ruler and one of those rolly cutty things. I forget the proper name. And you just want to make sure all of your lines are super straight and even. Now to stick them to the cake, I rubbed a bit of water on the back side and then I just pressed it against the side of the cake. I also didn't measure the distance between them, I just started with one side, put one directly opposite to it, 
then did another two in the centers of those two. You know, you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> and then I placed two more stripes in each quarter section. So 12 stripes overall on this four inch cake. To get rid of the extra length on top, I just used a pair of scissors and snipped away at each stripe. Now for the bottom tier, I used some red buttercream and I kind of went with that vintage pipe trend style and I found this little hack where you take a circle cutter and you just press it into the cake to make sure you get really even lines. You just lightly press it into the side of the cake to create a guide basically and I did that all the way around and then went over it with my buttercream. I had the buttercream all ready and then I used the Wilton number 18 star tip, placed it in my piping bag, filled it with buttercream, and then all I did was just move up and down on that guide that I created with the circle cutter. I tried to keep it thinner at the top and then thicker as I got to the center, and I tried my best to be as consistent as possible all the way around the cake. And wow, I don't like meringue type buttercreams as much when it comes to eating the cake, but it's so satisfying to do this kind of decorating with. Like, just look at it. It's so satisfying. <laughs> Anyways, after that, I used the same tip to pipe a basic shell border along the base of the top tier to hide that gap where it sits on top of the bottom tier. After that, I switched to the bigger tip, Wilton's 4B, and then I piped a big border along the base of the bottom tier. After that, I switched to the yellow buttercream and I used Wilton's 102, also known as the rose petal tip or the teardrop tip, whatever you wanna call it. And I just did it on the edge of each tier. So I went to the very edge and I just moved my hand up and down, very small movements to create this kind of like ruffly border, which I think looks so cute and just brings the whole thing together. Then I decorated the bottom tier a little more with the fondant stars from earlier, which had dried by now, and I just placed them where I thought they looked cute. I think the variety of sizes helps, and I didn't want to go too overboard, so I didn't put any on the top tier. And you can definitely skip this step, but I wanted to add a tiny bit more detail and color by adding these sprinkles to the red piping as well. Now for the character images, I knew nobody was going to eat these, so I used regular computer paper to print them. And I placed them on fondant so they had some support. 
I didn't want these actually stuck on the cake. I wanted them to be standing on their own, scattered around the cake board. So I made the fondant fairly thin so that they could dry quick. And I stuck the images to the fondant by using some shortening. Then I cut them out with an X-Acto blade, turned them around, put toothpicks on the back and used more fondant to hold everything together. And again, I made the fondant on the back also very thin so that it would dry faster, but that also meant that these were really delicate, so I had to be extra careful. So now for the big topper, I bought these styrofoam balls and basically I wanted to cover it in a bunch of different colors of fondant to look like a big thing of balloons. So I started by stabbing it with some skewers and I got all my fondant colors ready. And then I began the long process which was rolling out the fondant into little balls, then cutting them in half to make half spheres. I used water to make it sticky and then I stuck them to the foam ball. I did flatten out some of these fondant half spheres so that they would cover more surface area on the styrofoam, but I also wanted some to be more round to give it that dimension and really sell the look of a bunch of balloons. So as the process went on, this styrofoam ball slowly got heavier and heavier. At first I was using this candle holder to hold it up, but then it soon became too heavy for that and I had to flip it around. Then I had to use a granola bar box. If I had something like a styrofoam cake, I would have definitely used that to hold it up, but I didn't. But no big deal, I just kept going until the entire ball was covered. Then the last thing to do was just put everything together. So for the characters, I stabbed the board first so that I didn't have to put a lot of pressure on the images because I didn't want to accidentally crack the fondant and break them. For the fondant letters, I didn't really need to stab the cake beforehand because since I used a meringue buttercream, it was a lot easier to poke it through compared to like American buttercream. And if some of the gold paint came off, I just touched it up afterwards. Then I used some buttercream to stick that gold number three onto the thing of balloons and I put that on top of the cake and I just had to place a couple more fondant spheres in this little gap where you could still see some of the styrofoam. And after that, the cake was finished. I love how it turned out so much, especially because I came up with this design as I was baking the cake. I was like, I'm gonna do this two tier and I know it's gonna be Madagascar themed, but I didn't have a clear vision on the design, so I think it turned out super cool. I hope you all enjoyed. Be sure to leave a like on this video and a comment down below, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye!